I thought I had escaped my painful past by moving away, but his cousin exposed my secret pregnancy. Now my ex wants to be involved in our child's life should I give him a chance or protect the new life I've built. I, 26F, grew up in the Midwest, but went to college in California. There I met and dated Jeff, 26M, for our final two years of undergraduate. After graduation, I stayed in California to get my master's degree while Jeff entered the workforce. We were happy together and we planned to get married after I got my master's. After I finished my schooling, Jeff got cold feet about getting married and eventually becoming a father. Abandonment issues from his bio dad leaving, so he broke up with me. Heartbroken feels like it would barely scratch the surface on how I felt. I had a great job in California, so I stayed in hopes that Jeff would come to his senses and we'd get back together. We never did. He met Grace, 25F and started dating her about five months after we broke up. I started planning on moving back to my home state once I realized it was actually over. Then he and Grace broke up at the beginning of this year. Jeff and I ended up sleeping together a few times while they were broken up. It was a very public breakup, no cheating involved. About a week after the last time we had sex, he told me that he and Grace were getting back together. He said he couldn't remain friends with me because he still had feelings for me, and he had to let them fade to be fair to Grace. His final words to me were to not call him unless I was literally dying and just wanting to say goodbye. I left California behind three weeks later. Two weeks after I had returned home, I found out that I was pregnant. It's Jeff's. Um, I wasn't going to be that girl that uses a pregnancy to get a man back, so I deleted all my social media accounts and made new ones that don't have my name attached to them. The only Cali people I added were trusted friends who I knew either had no connection to Jeff or who were loyal to me and wouldn't tell him my new accounts. Early in my pregnancy, I made the mistake of checking out Jeff and Grace's respective profiles and saw that they referred to each other as low ML. And Jeff even had a picture of them captioned saying he was going to marry that girl. That broke me all over again and I have since blocked them both and decided I had to move on with my life. I'm now six five months pregnant. Since moving back, I have bought my own house in my home state and have been busy building a nursery for my baby. I already love this little baby in my belly and I feel 100% confident that I can raise and provide for him on my own with minor help from my family. One of my best friends back in California was having an engagement party. I won't be able to attend the wedding as I'll be busy with a newborn when it happens. So I decided to fly out to see my friends and offer my congratulations to the couple before my life becomes baby-centric. I got into town on Thursday and honestly had a blast seeing all my friends yesterday. Even though it's only been about six months since I last saw them, they were all respectful of my wishes not to take pictures of me below the chest. They did post some pictures of me online, but from the angles, it just looks like I gained some weight in my face. Nothing that would give away my pregnancy. It's a couple days before my flight back home and the friend that I'm staying with suggested we go to the store because she wanted to get a scrapbook for our engaged friend. So we went to the store, and as we were getting ready to leave, I saw Jeff's cousin Tanya, 22-ish, F, walk in. I'd talked to her several times at Jeff's family gatherings over the years, but we never really got along. She was always a bit too gossipy for me to like her. So of course she was the last person I wanted to see. The first thing she did was loudly announce that I was pregnant as if everyone in the store couldn't tell just by looking at me. Then she starts grilling me asking if Jeff knows. I said no and that he doesn't need to know as it's not his. That was a lie obviously but I didn't want to open a can of worms. Tanya then tells me with how big my belly is that I'm far along and asks how I could move on so quickly. I told her that Jeff and I broke up a long time ago. She responded saying that everyone knows we were still hooking up at the beginning of this year. I did not know that was common knowledge. I figured Jeff would have kept his mouth shut about that. Anyway, I lied and told her that I already had a new boyfriend and that I was five months pregnant. She seemed to accept that and awkwardly congratulated me. My friend and I paid for her stuff and left immediately after that. I prayed that would be the end of it. Like I said, Tanya is a gossip so of course she went and ran her mouth about seeing me pregnant just a few hours later. Now a bunch of my friends have messaged me saying that Jeff is blowing up their inboxes trying to reach me. None of them have told him my new number or social media so he has no way of reaching me himself. My flight back home isn't for another two days and I'm freaking out. Some of my friends are saying that I should just tell him the truth now that he knows I'm pregnant. I still say I can get by pretending it's someone else's and that I'm not far enough along for it to be his. I honestly just want to ignore him and go back home. However, I'm having some doubts that that's the right choice and there isn't a consensus on what to do, so I'm turning to internet strangers. Told her, I got pregnant by my ex, moved away, planning to raise the child myself. His cousin saw me and told him I'm pregnant. Now he's trying to get a hold of me and I just want to go home and ignore him. Should I tell him the truth or just go home? Update 1. Hi everyone. So the consensus on my post was to tell Jeff about the baby and his. Even from just the first few comments that seemed clear, we did end up meeting up. 
It wasn't particularly interesting or dramatic, but if anyone cares, here's what happened. He got a hold of the friend I was staying with on Instagram. I wanted to just talk to him on the phone, but he insisted we talk in person ASAP. In retrospect, I should have just waited until the next day, but I kind of just wanted to get it over with, and it seemed like he did too. TBH, I thought he was going to tell me that he wanted nothing to do with the kid because I didn't see any other reason why he wanted to talk in person, right? That second. Keep in mind, it was almost 10 at night at the time. So my friend and I went to his parents' house where he was waiting. His parents always treated me like family, so I guess I felt comfortable being there, even though we probably should have met at a neutral location. When we got there, Jeff's mom answered the door. She hugged me and I could tell she wanted to touch my stomach, but she restrained herself and didn't even ask. Thankfully, I always liked her. We made awkward small talk as she led me to the living room. It was clear that they had just had a party as it was still messy with a bunch of drinking cups lying around and confetti on the floor. On the couch was Jeff and Grace holding each other's hands. I was surprised that I honestly felt nothing for him at first. His stepdad offered me a seat, but I chose to stand. I wasn't planning on being there long anyway. Jeff started off saying that I might be able to fool Tanya, but he knows there's no way I would have ever met a new guy and gotten pregnant that fast. So he asked why I didn't tell him. I told him the truth that the last time we spoke he told me not to contact him unless I was literally dying. And I'm not dying. He told me that he was trying to be respectful to Grace and that obviously this would have been an exception. Grace chimed in to tell me that I ruined her proposal. I found out later, third-hand info but knowing Tanya I believe it, that the party at his parents' house was for him to propose to Grace in front of all their friends and families. Tanya waited until after the proposal and when people were giving speeches, she told Jeff she was so glad he got away from me and wasn't going to be stuck raising my baby. Then all hell broke loose at the party apparently. I had no idea that happened at the time, or I honestly would not have went to see him at all. But hearing that he proposed was when it hurt. He broke up with me because he was scared of marriage and kids, but he dated her not even half as long as we did and she got a ring. I put on a brave face, or at least I think I did, and acted like it didn't bother me, but it absolutely did. His mom told Grace that it's not my fault, and now wasn't the time for that. Then Jeff told me that. Obviously, I can't move now. I told him that I already did, and I was only in California for the weekend. He countered saying that I have to move back. I told him, no, I'm not doing that. He said, well, I can't just leave. At that point, I got frustrated and told him that I left months ago. My job is in my home state. I bought a house. All my doctor's appointments have been there. I established residency there a long time ago. California isn't my home anymore and hasn't been for half a year now. So then he got frustrated and got up to approach me asking if he's just supposed to send a paycheck once a month and saying this wasn't how it was supposed to happen. I don't really know what he meant by that second part cuz he just found out I was pregnant a few hours before but I assumed he was taking about his life plans. I forced myself to calm down and try to be empathetic. I told him that if he was worried about this screwing up his plans for the future that he had nothing to worry about, I don't want or need anything from him. I've planned everything out from finances to child care when I return to work to even setting up my baby's college fund. It's all taken care of already. He didn't really say anything. I didn't know if he was thinking or just relieved that I had it all handled. I told him he can still get married to Grace and have his own family someday. I promised I wouldn't bother or blame him for anything. My baby will be loved and cared for. Jeff got teary-eyed and told me that I know how he feels about this. He was referring to when he broke up with me and said that he didn't want to be a dad because he didn't think he'd be a good one. He also has abandonment issues from his bio dad walking out on him, his siblings, and his mom when he was six. I told Jeff that he's not him, his bio dad, that he's better than him and always will be. His mom started crying at this point, I guess, from seeing how his dad's abandonment still affects him to this day. I promised Jeff that I wouldn't let my baby think that Jeff was a deadbeat. I'd be honest that we just weren't meant to be together and we live thousands of miles apart. He told me that he can't just not be in his kid's life and that I don't understand what it could do to them. He asked if we could please just figure something out together. I asked him what he realistically expected would be a solution. Because I'm not moving back to California and I highly doubt he and Grace wanted to pack their bags and move that far away from their own families and friends. I said, I'm not going to be sending my kid on a plane every few months either because that's too much. Jeff didn't say anything to that, so I told him maybe that could be an option when he's older and has more independence, but right now it's not happening. Jeff's eyes lit up and he asked, it's a boy. I'd been careful not to reveal the gender up until then, but I messed up there. I nodded and he nervously asked if he could feel the baby. Before I could even respond, Grace let out this loud wail and stormed off to the kitchen. Jeff apologized to me and then went to go comfort her. His mom excused herself as well as she was still crying. So she left and her husband followed her. That left me and my friend awkwardly standing alone in the living room. All we hear is his mom sniffling in the hallway and Grace sobbing while talking to Jeff in the kitchen. It was so incredibly uncomfortable. And I know many will hate me for this, but I just felt overwhelmed by the whole thing.
Maybe it makes me pathetic, but having to stand in the room where a party was just held to celebrate Jeff proposing to another woman hurt so damn bad. So I left. I told my friend, let's get the hell out of here, and we quietly walked out. We ended up staying in a hotel, and I was able to get an earlier flight home on Sunday. Now I'm back home and putting my focus back on the nursery. I told my friends that I had talked to Jeff, and I apologized if he still tried to reach me through them. I advise them to block him if it's too much. I know this isn't the end of things. I'm planning on reaching out to him again eventually. Even if he broke my heart, I still care about him. And I won't deny him a relationship with his kid if that's what he really wants. I have no idea how it's gonna work and I'm only allowed to update once, so I apologize that I won't be able to tell anyone who cares how it all turns out. Thank you for the advice on my last post. Even though everyone was downvoting me in the post itself, it was nice to get opinions without bias. Update two. First, I've seen a lot of comments saying that Jeff proposed to Grace within a few months after they started dating. That's not true. Aside from the one-month breakup where Jeff and I conceived the baby they were together roughly a year and a half before the engagement, assuming they had no more breakups after. I DK their full history, nor do I care to. Second, I feel like people were being a bit harsh on Jeff. I can honestly say he is not an abusive or controlling person. The man never so much as raised his voice at me in the four years we dated. He was a bit overbearing by demanding that I had to stay in California because that's where he is. But he just found out about the baby and was panicking that I'd disappear and he wouldn't be able to contact me. Which, to be fair, that's exactly what I did, so I get it. I had a million thoughts, some wildly ridiculous when I think about it now running through my own head when I found out too. Third, he wasn't juggling Grace and I at the same time like people think. She broke up with him. They both thought for good at the time. He and I started having sex again, but it wasn't like we were in a sequel of the lovey-dovey honeymoon man phase. It was a weird and confusing time. We weren't talking about getting back together. I already had a start date for my new job back home and my move was scheduled. He didn't know any of that. I was still in love with him, of course, and I hoped he'd tell me he wanted to get back together and I would have stayed, but he didn't. Finding out he was getting back with Grace hurt, but I can't say I felt used for sex. I don't think either of us knew what the hell we were doing by sleeping together again in the first place. Jeff is a simple man overall. I promise he's not some super villain taking advantage of women and playing with their emotions. I'm not making excuses for him. I wish it were that easy to say that he's a dirtbag, and you should give me all your sympathy. In reality, I know who Jeff is as a person. Anyone who read my post knows him as just a collection of bad and or questionable choices he made. If you summarize anyone up to just the bad shit they've done, of course they'd come off as an unlikable person. Jeff's not evil or manipulative. He's just got some stuff he probably should have worked through years ago, and admittedly, I never thought his issues were that prevalent until we broke up. Plus, I'm positive that Grace knew we slept together while they were broken up. There's no way that was a shock to her. He would have told her himself, and even if somehow hadn't. If Tanya knew, then everyone else knew shortly after. Guaranteed. Lastly, I appreciate everyone concerned about any custody issues that may arise from this. I was also amused by the people who were hyping themselves up thinking that I was delusional and actually going to be forced to put my baby on a plane by court order. I'm not sure why so many people on Reddit are used to dysfunctional relationships where judges and a huge custody battle need to be involved, but that's not us. Jeff and I were together and very much in love for years. It might be hard to picture that when you've only read about the shitty end of our relationship, but everything before the breakup was an ideal relationship which is exactly why it hurt me so much when he ended it. Things are weird now, but we don't hate each other. Our default option, even in a complicated situation like this, is not we're taking this to court. That would be the last resort. I'm sure we'll work it out between ourselves long before it ever gets there. So on to the actual update. I planned on contacting Jeff after a couple weeks. I wanted to take time to gather my own thoughts and figure out what I wanted to say. Instead, I got phone calls from his number about a week after I returned home. He left a voicemail asking me to call him so we could talk. I was honestly furious because there's no way he should have been able to find my number unless somebody told him. It might not seem like it's a big deal, but to me I saw it as somebody who betrayed my trust in them. I texted him asking how he got my number. He said it wasn't important and that he wanted to talk. I said it is important to me but he still didn't want to tell me. I told him we can talk when he tells me who he got my number from. So finally he told me who it was and sent a screenshot of the conversation when I asked for proof. It was the second least likely friend I would have expected to break my trust. That's a whole other story though. So we talked over FaceTime and he told me that he absolutely wants to be in our son's life. He doesn't know how it's going to work long term and neither do I. There was no threat of lawyers or his mom shouting grandparents rights in the background like people were expecting. We're adults and we'll figure it out. The situation is not any easier to handle logistically, but emotions from that night have died down and we have clearer heads to move forward with. He did, however, have the audacity to tell me that he hates that I didn't tell him much sooner and that I wasn't planning to tell him at all until Tanya found out because he thought we meant more to each other than that. I told him I thought we did, 
until he told me not to contact him unless I was dying. That shut him up quickly because he knows now that it was an extreme and unnecessary thing to say even if he wanted to cut contact with me. He apologized for it and I apologized for not telling him about the baby myself. That's all we can really do. We're about to co-parent a child together so we don't get the luxury of holding a grudge with one another over past slights. He also told me that he and Grace are no longer together. He claims that it was a mutual decision, but that sounds too easy to me. How do you go from newly engaged to broken up in 18 hours with it being a completely clean process? I'm guessing he's just sparing me the ugly details on what must have actually happened. I do feel bad for Grace other than incorrectly assigning blame for her ruined engagement party she didn't do anything wrong. I don't know her personally, but her proposal night should have been one of the best nights of her life, and it was ruined. I wouldn't want that for any woman. And because I know what everyone is gonna say, no, I am not seeing this as an opportunity to get back together with Jeff. Honestly, my focus is on my son right now. I'm not thinking about jumping into a relationship relationship with anyone, much less the man who broke my heart once already. I think Jeff and I need to figure out how we're going to co-parent first and foremost. And Teeb, I want a man who loves me and chooses me for the person that I am, not because I happen to have given birth to his child. Plus, I don't know that I could ever get over that he proposed to grace over me. Even if they broke off their engagement, I still want to know why she got a ring and I didn't. And I am going to ask eventually, but I don't think any answer will ever make it okay to me. A lot of people said it wasn't that he didn't want marriage, he just didn't want it with me. I find that hard to believe because as I said above, we really had an ideal relationship. Our breakup wasn't a buildup of issues, it really was as simple as, you want marriage and kids I don't which I think most would agree is just the natural end of a relationship. If it really is as simple as I just wasn't the one, then I want him to look me in the that himself. Jeff is a terrible liar even when he's lying for a good reason like a special surprise. He fidgets his fingers and can't maintain eye contact when he's lying. So if he looks me in the eyes and tells me his reason for why he chose to marry her and not me, I'll know if he's being honest. Jeff also told me that his mom wanted to send me stuff for the baby so he asked for my address. I declined. I'm positive that there are no nefarious reasons and she's excited and wants to help. This will be her first grandchild. However, I still felt a little uncomfortable giving them my home address. He's been texting me every day and calls me every night to say goodnight. Sometimes he wants to talk to the baby. It's a bit confusing for me because he broke up with me because he didn't want a kid. But now he wants to be involved to the point where he's going out of his way to contact me and ask if I need anything. It's strange, and I don't really understand how his brain works, but like I said in my last post, I won't deny him a relationship with his kid if he wants one. Jeff wants to visit me in person to talk properly, but I told him I'm not sure if that's necessary right now. He asked to come last weekend, and I said no. Then he asked again about possibly coming this weekend, but I told him I can't, because I'm having my baby shower on Saturday. He wants to come. I'm not sure if that's a great idea. I'm not worried that he would say or do anything bad and we're getting along over text feet. I can tell that he just wants to be involved but part of me feels like it's sort of, ick, playing house almost. I guess it wouldn't be a big deal if I made it clear he would be here as a friend and the father of the baby but not as anything more. My parents don't think it's a good idea, but I know that's just because they don't like Jeff, ever since he broke up with me. My sister who is more level-headed says that it could be a show of good faith that I'm serious about having a healthy co-parenting relationship, and it'll probably be easier to build that foundation now before the baby comes. My brothers don't care either way, but they say they're ready to beat up Jeff if he does or says anything stupid. He won't, but I love my brothers for always looking out for me. I'm not sure what I'm going to decide, but I know Jeff needs an answer soon soon so he can book a flight in a hotel room if I do say yes. I'm open to suggestions. Update 3. Hi everyone, I've been requested to give an update on the baby shower and whether or not I let Jeff attend. This post is rather lengthy as it covers a whole weekend, so I'm including a told at the bottom. So I did end up allowing Jeff to come to my baby shower. When he called me the Monday night before my Saturday baby shower, I brought it up. I told him he could come if he agreed to three rules. We are not together. Don't touch me, hug me, or put your hands on my stomach unless I say it's okay. I agreed that we needed to have a serious talk. However, it only takes place after the baby shower. Ix if there's an awkward vibe because we have things we want to get out. We ignore it until after the baby shower. You stay in a hotel. I wasn't housing anyone. I needed my home to be my own place to return to if things got too overwhelming. Unsurprisingly, he was fine with all of those conditions and was just happy that he could come. I also told him he was free to invite his mother if she wanted to attend. He was relieved because she did mention wanting to come with him if he came. Everything was settled until the next day when he called to ask me if his brother and sister could come too. His stepdad had a prior commitment and wouldn't be able to attend. I shouldn't have been surprised Jeff asked about his siblings though. His family is really close-knit. They show up for each other and everything. I've never had any issues with anyone in his family. I always got along with his parents and siblings, especially his sister. I said it was fine. Um, I didn't really care as long as they understood that I was the guest of honor at my baby shower and not a hostess so I wouldn't be checking in with them the entire time. His sister also messaged me privately to ask if I was really okay with them all coming 
and that she and their younger brother could stay home if I didn't want them all there. It was totally unnecessary because I already said yes, but I really appreciated that she did that. Their flight got in on Friday afternoon. My parents decided to host a dinner for Jeff's family. They don't like Jeff anymore, but they felt that since he and I are now tied together for the next 18 years minimum, our family should be acquainted at least. When they got to my parents' house, the greetings were as awkward as expected. Jeff leaned down to my stomach and said hi to the baby. The baby kicked and when I told Jeff he got excited so I offered to let him feel. I figured he should be able to have that moment. His mom was ecstatic that the baby was kicking, saying that he already knows his daddy's voice. She was so happy that I didn't have the heart to tell her that the baby had already been kicking for the past half hour before they got there. Dinner was fine. It was mostly talking about the baby shower, but we did also go around the table and everyone suggested names. I have to admit I'm a bit bummed about the naming. I was happy that I had sole decision power when it was just me. But now I have to get Jeff's approval too, which sucks. Some of the names he suggested were awful to you. The day of the baby shower was long, but it went perfectly. Luckily, Tanya was over 2,000 miles away, so she couldn't ruin the event. It was relatively big, as my family has always done co-ed baby showers. We even had some games specifically for the men in attendance. I felt a little bit bad about Jeff just being a guest, so we tried to include him last minute by letting him give the guys the rules for the bottle chugging game. It was tea, not beer, of course and we added a last-minute best dad joke competition that he got to decide the winner on. We also took some pictures together. As I said in my last post, I didn't want to play house with him, but honestly, I was having such a great time that I didn't even mind that both sides of the family suggested pictures. More importantly, he asked for my consent before putting his arm around me and touching my stomach for the pictures, which was such a relief that he was respecting the boundaries I gave him before he came. After the baby shower ended, I invited Jeff's family to my house. I mentioned not wanting to give my address to him in my last post. Some people misunderstood that as me trying to stay hidden forever. Obviously, he was going to know my address once the baby came. I think what those people failed to realize is that it was all happening so fast. Jeff got my number one day, and the next day he was asking for my address on his mom's behalf to send baby stuff. It was a lot and far too soon but since everything was going great, I didn't mind so much inviting them to see my house. His mom cried when she saw the nursery. Then I started crying with her cuz, I'm a hormonal mess some days. The nursery is basically finished. I had just bought a different shade of blue paint because I didn't like the one I initially chose after looking at it for a couple weeks. I was planning on it being repainted the next week, but Jeff and his brother offered to do it while they were there. I said no, obviously, because they were guests. My dad chimed in to say to let him, Jeff, do it because it's about time he stepped up to help. Obviously, my dad knows that Jeff just found out about the baby recently and I reminded him of that. But my parents were the ones who comforted me every time I cried when I first moved back home and again when I found out I was pregnant. It's gonna take a while for them to warm up to Jeff again. So Jeff and his brother painted the first coat with my dad while I talked to Jeff's sister outside. I asked her about Grace, but she wouldn't tell me what happened. She told me that it was a conversation between me and Jeff. She did tell me that her whole family tried to talk Jeff out of proposing because it was too fast. But he insisted, so they supported him. The only other thing she said was that Tanya has been banned from her family's events for the foreseeable future, and their families aren't on good terms as Tanya's parents don't think what she did was a big deal. After the guys finished painting, everyone except my sister and Jeff left. Jeff and I decided to talk that night. My sister was in the and I needed emotional support after Jeff left. He and I talked in my bedroom. My feet were killing me and I needed to lie down. So I did that and Jeff sat on the other end of the bed. Neither of us knew how to start so I just asked him point blank why he changed his mind about kids. I reminded him that he broke up with me because he didn't want marriage or kids. He said that it's true that he didn't want kids and that he's still afraid he'll screw it up somehow but that the baby already exists and so he already loves him and wants to be present for him. I then asked about Grace I wanted to know why he proposed to her and not me. It's not relevant now but I'm still human and I wanted to know what was different about her. He told me that he was never scared of marriage. He meant it when we discussed plans about marriage after I was done with school. He wanted to be married to me. It was just the kid's part that he couldn't do. He says that he just added marriage into his reasoning for our breakup because he felt like it would be easier for me to accept. In his head I might have been able to overlook the kid's thing at least for a few years but he knew if he said he didn't want marriage either then I wouldn't stay. It why he didn't just talk to me about it. Instead, he broke my heart because he thought he was setting me free. As for why he proposed to Grace, she was on the same page as him regarding children. She didn't want them. He said he talked to her about getting a vasectomy, and she was on board with his decision. He admitted that they moved too fast. She was pressuring him to propose to her and she wanted the big party so the proposal wasn't a surprise event. Everyone knew what it was going to be, including Grace, as she practically planned the thing herself. All of his family tried to talk him out of it and wait a bit longer, but he was afraid that he would lose another woman and didn't want to make the same mistake again. His words, not mine. I asked why they broke up because I didn't believe him that it was a clean mutual decision. He said it was mutual, 
but a bit messy. Apparently, he and Grace talked that next day after everything went down. She told him that I ran away and to just let me go. She said she was willing to reconsider kids if he realized that he changed his mind but that she didn't want to be a stepmom to my child. She basically gave him an ultimatum. He could choose either her or the baby but not both. He asked her for the ring back right then and there. Apparently, she threw it at him along with a few other heavier objects. He says they're fully done. He tried to do the sweet talk thing, telling me that he's glad it was me and not her that got pregnant. He says I saved him from making a huge mistake in marrying her. He regrets everything and wishes that he could redo the last two years and never break up with me. Then he asked if I could ever see us getting back together. I got frustrated at that point and told him that he can't just keep jumping back and forth between us. He tried to defend himself and while I agree that I don't think he does it with ill intent, it is what he's doing. I told him that he keeps letting his fear make hasty decisions for him and he needs to work on that with a therapist. I'm about to raise a baby, I don't need to be raising a man too. He did agree to go to therapy to work on his issues. Whether he actually does it or not, I don't know. I did make it clear that he needs to go into it understanding that it's for his and our son's benefit and not just to win me back because that's not my focus at all right now. That was pretty much it for our talk. At some point he ended up laying down beside me so we were facing each other. There was no touching. We just talked while laying beside each other. I got sleepy, and he left in an Uber back to his hotel. They were supposed to leave on Sunday, but their flight back home was delayed by a day due to the weather in California. So the next morning they all came over and Jeff and his brother finished the second coat of paint on the nursery. It came out perfectly. I'm really glad I went with the second color choice. I made the guys lunch as a thank you for their work even though they were both happy to do it for their son and nephew. Jeff told me that he's planning on moving to my home state within the next month because he wants to be here for the baby's birth. His job does offer remote work so he could do it without having to find a new job. As of now he says it would be temporary but admitted that he doesn't know if he'll be able to leave once the baby is here. We'll see what happens. They left the next day while I was at work. Jeff stopped by my work to say goodbye in person. My coworkers all melted when they saw him say bye to the baby and promise him that he'd be back soon. They all think I should give him another chance for the baby's sake. Although I suspect that most of them are also easily swayed by the fact that Jeff is 6'3 and conventionally attractive, which they were constantly bringing up at my baby shower and when he came to say bye, Jeff and his family made it back home safe. I haven't heard much else about his plans to move here but I imagine that will take a while anyway. Tulger, Jeff and his family came to my baby shower. Everything went fine. I got the answers that I wanted about why he proposed to Grace and why he changed his mind about being a dad. He's agreed to get therapy for his issues. We're moving forward with our co-parenting plan and he's likely going to be moving here, at least temporarily, when the baby is born. Comments. Just as an FYI, you still technically have soul naming power. If you don't want to exercise that, right in order to keep the peace be nice that's up to you but you don't have to honestly it sounds like jeff will go along with any name you like at this point just to keep you happy i'm glad things are working out for you jeff's family sounds amazing i see what you're saying but i believe in choosing my battles if my options are to find a name we're both happy with or risk bottled resentment from jeff over me making a unilateral decision because you're right he would agree to me picking what i want just to keep the peace i'm going with the first option there are much more important things to hold my ground on regarding my child's future. I've seen people commenting on the surname too. Where I live, the kid almost always takes the dad's last name with few exceptions. Even my parents are expecting the baby to have Jeff's surname now that he's involved. While I wouldn't give any woman grief for wanting to pass her name on, it's not important to me. I know he's mine and that's all I need. Also, I've got three brothers, so the odds are extremely likely that our family name will be passed on through them anyway. I'm so happy for you. You indeed saved Jeff from marrying Grace who seemed to be overbearing and domineering. I hope you and Jeff will co-parent peacefully. If you decide to give him a second chance, make him grovel. I bet his family are happy that Grace is gone. She sounds like a high-maintenance woman planning her own big engagement party after pressuring the guy to propose. Wow. Nobody said it directly, but I was definitely getting vibes that his family didn't like her very much. I don't know her personally but she sounds a bit immature. Throwing things at someone during a breakup is just not okay. So Grace manipulated everything then. He was going to get married to the wrong person and regret it years later. I don't know if she manipulated him, but she definitely pressured him. He said that she told him she didn't want to waste her 20s on him if he wasn't serious about getting married eventually. He didn't tell me this, but I'm guessing maybe he told her about the reason for our breakup and she didn't want the same thing to happen to her, so she pressured him into proposing. Again, that's just a guess, though. Oh, I have my own opinion, but girl, you are doing all very well and everything was perfect. He gave you a good explanation and you gave him a great insight. I love what you said about how his fear was taking decisions and advice. I hope all of you find your way. Keep us informed. Yeah, his answer for every decision he made was because I was scared of, which is just not a good way to go about anything. That's something he definitely needs to work on.